Hey everybody, this is Mr. Mobbin coming at you with another 8 push video. Uh, today we're taking a look at topic 2.2, which is focusing in on just kind of a basic overview on European colonization. So uh, for a lot of this stuff, particularly when we're talking about, you know, the uh, the English uh, in this unit, it's going to be going a lot more into detail. A lot of the Spanish stuff has already been gone into detail with in unit 1. So this is just kind of one of those places where it just kind of takes... Uh, you know, an overview of kind of what's going on in what's going to become America uh, colonially over the course of the, you know, 15, uh, 16, 17 hundreds. So, no, and what's especially important when we talk about the Spanish uh, component of this is that in the last unit, it was talking about the Spanish Empire in total, pretty much in North America, particularly North America, uh, but this is really looking at uh, America. Now, when we do take a look at the Spanish colonies that are going to be popping up in what's going to become the United States, uh, you got to understand this is going to be developing at a much slower rate than what you would see in other parts of the Western Hemisphere Empire, particularly if you contrast with, say, Mexico. Uh, and there's some big reasons for that. One of the big reasons is that uh, in the Spanish possessions in what will become the United States, there isn't a whole lot of diversity in terms of the, the mineral resources that are going to be uh, available there. Uh, you know, Florida is going to be pretty limited. Uh, yes, there's going to be some mining in, in parts of what's going to become New Mexico, uh, but pretty limited compared to what you're going to be seeing in Mexico proper. Something else that's going to be of considerable uh, difference uh, is going to be a long-standing continued issue with conflict with natives, particularly in New Mexico. Yes, I know that the Spanish, you know, obviously had some conflicts in what's going to be modern-day Mexico, you know, most famously with the Aztecs, uh, but it's not going to be as a persistent of a headache as it will be in what's going to become uh, the United States. Now, remember, uh, just like when we talked about, you know, in Unit 1 with the three Gs that are going to kind of be defining uh, motivations for the Spanish to colonize in the Western Hemisphere, uh, part of that, the three Gs, of course, is God, and that's the idea that, once again, in addition to the gold and the glory of the conquistadors, you are looking to try to spread uh, the Roman Catholic faith. And that's going to be of particular importance as we kind of get into, you know, the the latter 1500s into the 1600s, because, you know, the Catholic Church now has a major rival uh, with the, you know, split off Protestant uh, movements, uh, which is going to lead to tremendous conflict in Europe itself. And so that rivalry is going to be extended into what's going to become the future United States. Now, when we do talk about, and this was mentioned, you know, previously in the last unit, but just as a reminder that, uh, you know, the, the vast majority of these colonists are going to be coming over to what will be the Spanish colonies are going to be male. Uh, there's going to be a pretty uh, significant propensity of these Spanish colonists, uh, conquistadors, etc., that are going to be uh, marrying uh, with natives. Uh, it's going to lead, as we mentioned previously, to the rise of the mestizo culture uh, and, and lots of, you know, issues regarding uh, racial uh, class hierarchy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but that that's going to be uh, important in characterizing uh, the relations, marriage patterns of the Spanish. And once again, when we do talk about the, um, the development of where these colonies are going to be in the uh, in, in the United States. Uh, first off, we're taking a look at this map right here. Uh, if you take a look down here, uh, the first permanent settlement that's going to be in the future United States will be down here in Florida at St. Augustine. As you can see here, this dates you know all the way back to 1513. That's that's you know uh, you're talking about over 500 years ago. Uh, and uh, or excuse me, uh, Florida in 1513, St. Augustine 1565. But understand that, you know, the the colonization of Florida, we're talking about going back about 500 years. It's, it's pretty significant. Uh, but once again, Florida, as far as the Spanish are going to be concerned, considered, it's going to be a backwater. It's going to be, you know, this kind of rugged, remote area, in part because it's, it's it, you know, let's be honest, it's Florida. So uh, it's swampy. Uh, it's, it's not super conducive for mining or a lot of the things that the Spanish are looking for. The Spanish are looking for get-quick, rich kind of schemes. Find the gold, find the silver, find the precious metals. And Florida uh, doesn't have much of that. So Florida is going to be kind of a lower priority in what's going to be the Spanish Empire. Now, uh, if we take a look you know, to what's going to become the American Southwest, you're going to see more of a focus 
in what's going to be over here. If you see my cursor, that's going to be the future, uh, you know, New Mexico, uh, with the uh, the capital being at Santa Fe. This is going to get more attention than what we see in Florida and some of the other parts of the Spanish Empire, and uh, you know, mostly it's going to be because you're going to be able to find some mining operations out there. Uh, now, no, there's still going to be, you know, with Pope's Rebellion, for example, a lot of native pushback. But, you know, Santa Fe is going to be an important outpost, though remote, kind of on the frontier of the empire uh, in the Western Hemisphere, still going to be a significant outpost. Uh, if you're talking about some other well-known settlements that are going to be defining the Spanish Empire in the, in the future United States, you've also got Texas down and through here. Uh, you know, whereas Florida is going to start to become colonized in the 1500s, New Mexico in the 1600s. We're not really getting into Texas, and, and most of where the Spanish colonization of Texas is going to be is going to be kind of in the southern, southeastern part of, uh, of the future state, and that's not really going to be happening in significant numbers until the early 1700s. And then, of course, you've also got the significant colonization that's going to be taking place out on the west coast here and what's going to become eventually California, going from San Diego all the way up uh, past San Francisco, kind of heading towards what's going to be kind of the border between modern-day California and Oregon. And, uh, you know, notable in these coastal settlements is going to be a number of Catholic missions, you know, most famously set up by Father Junipero Serra. Uh, so, you know, you're going to be seeing that, you know, the Spanish are certainly going to have a significant footprint in what's going to become the United States. But note, for the most part, when you look at the Spanish Empire in its totality, what's going to become America uh, is going to be kind of more of an outpost. It's on the frontier. It's kind of on the fringes to some degree of what are going to be much more significant parts of the empire. For example, what's going to be Mexico, what's going to become uh, you know, Chile, uh, you know, Peru, uh, Bolivia, places like that. So uh, just be aware of that. Now, Note, of course, the Spanish are not going to be the only European power to have a significant colonial presence. You've also got our friends coming from France. And uh, when we do talk about the French colonies that are going to be getting set up, uh, there's going to be some commonalities with the Spanish. Uh, when we do talk about the French colonies, uh, you're talking about, once again, mostly single men that are coming over. Uh, they're coming over here primarily for economic purposes, not so much uh you know the spreading of the catholic faith per se although that's coming as well but it's mostly about trying to make a buck and, and trying to make a buck uh with what's going to be the fur trade uh with the natives especially you know when we talk about you know the uh you know the source of income you can see beaver pelts are going to be almost as good as gold for the french uh as as what it will be for the spanish with gold and, and precious minerals uh in the southern part of the, of the continent uh, we will see millions of beaver uh, be hunted down and their furs used for uh, all sorts of clothing, uh, apparel, primarily hats, as you can see right here. Uh, and it's going to be extremely, extremely lucrative. Uh, and similar to the Spanish conquistadors, colonists that were coming over, these single men are going to get married to native women, uh, have families, etc. But a very noticeable difference that you're going to see a much smaller number of French colonists coming over uh, in comparison to the Spanish. Way, way, way more limited. Uh, so you're not going to have anything that's going to be a major population presence. Now, that being said, uh, you are going to see some notable uh, settlements that are going to be created. You know, uh, for example, you got uh, Quebec up here. Uh, you're also going to be seeing down here to the south, you're going to see the creation of what's going to become the Louisiana, uh, you know, territory eventually. Uh, and basically, Louisiana is going to be centered on uh, three rivers. It's going to be the Mississippi primarily, but also the Ohio to the east, and then the Missouri, as you follow my cursor, out to the west. And so you're going to be seeing, you know, the impact of explorers, you know, such as uh, Champlain, Joliet, Marquette, De La Salle. Uh, etc. But uh, note, when we do talk about what's going to be the future America, though Quebec is going to be pretty important because that's going to be, you know, uh, the gateway to the Atlantic in the northeastern part of the empire, uh, as time goes on, an even more important port is going to be set up down here in Louisiana, down here at New Orleans. And uh, understand why New Orleans is so critical at such an early stage. When this settlement is set up, you got to understand that 
This is where the Ohio, the Missouri, the Mississippi, they all drain down to New Orleans. So if you want to have access from the interior of the continent between the Appalachians to the east and, you know, the Rockies out to the west, if you're in between them, that's, you know, thousands and thousands of square miles, uh, all of that basically funnels down to New Orleans if you want to trade anything. So basically, whoever is going to control New Orleans is going to control the interior of North America. Uh, we know that pretty early on, and that's going to explain, you know, when we get to the early 1800s, why uh, Jefferson is going to be uh, hell-bent on trying to, you know, purchase New Orleans from uh, from the French, from uh, Napoleon. So, so you got the Spanish setting up shop, and you got the French setting up shop. When we come back for part two, we're going to take a look at two other uh, two other European empires that are going to be setting up uh, colonies, and that's going to be the Dutch and, of course, the English. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.